Uh, I played one year at Hastings Community College, and I came back here to UNL. I got on with uh, Coach Danny Nee's uh, basketball staff from 1992 to 1997. And along that journey, I remember one, we were coming back from Iowa State, we played basketball, I was a student manager, and we were driving back down I-80, and Coach Nee turned around and looked at me, and he said, Jay, what are you gonna do? I was like, what do you mean what am I gonna do? He's like, what are you gonna do in life? Just like when I've seen some other videos in the journalism school that a lot of times people ask you that, what are you gonna do? I really had no clue. He said, we better, we better figure it out. So that summer, I graduated, and I started my coaching career. I moved down to Texas. I always, as a youth, traveled and wanted to see different things. I moved down to Texas, and as you heard, I kind of bounced all over the place. The life of a coach is, is rather difficult, been to many places. As, that, as my journey came, and I've been blessed now that I work for the NBA's Houston Rockets, I coach their minor league team down in McAllen, Texas. I have my degree, I have a good job, but I didn't feel complete. There's something missing. I always knew I was Native, I always knew I was African American, but I never knew, I never put two and two together. So I started the process of finding out who I am. I came back to Lincoln and did, went through the state and found out that my mother was Carol Joy. She was Ponca. She had been involved in drugs, alcohol, and she had died of a liver cancer, liver disease. A couple things went through my mind. My parents raised me. I have a pretty good life so I could just stop and just keep going on with my life. But I decided I wanted to dig a little bit deeper. So I wrote a letter, actually, to my uncle, Fred Leroy. And I had a response from my cousin, Rhonda. She was all giddy on the phone because I was nervous. I was, in, I, don't know, I was in Texas. And she said, hey, I'm your cousin. I was like, hey. She said, we want to meet you. Um, and then I started digging more and more and found out how great and wonderful my Uncle Fred Leroy was and all that he did for the Ponca Indians and their actual, in 1990, worked hard, was down at the state capitol fighting for the restoration of the Ponca to be recognized as a federally funded tribe. I went over to his house and I liked sitting with my uncle just listening and learning about the Ponca Indians. My uncle didn't finish his education, but what he does as a tribal council and still does even this morning, he spreads the message. He says it's very difficult at times as Indian people are stuck in their ways, have a lot of negativity, alcohol, and a lot of things that he deals with or sees a lot of times gets discouraging. Well, that's easy for me being a basketball coach because just like Nebraska football lost, we lose a lot of games, but we don't stop. Just like in life, you get bad grades, Denny. In math, we don't stop. We study, we practice harder, we dig harder. So what I want to use is my coaching background to inspire the youth of Nebraska. We started our soccer youth leadership program with the Nebraska Commission of Indian Affairs has been very important to me. My uncle said many things to me that I've written down and wanted to share with you. He told me strength is not size, even though he looks up to me a lot and sees how big I am. My uncle said strength is in your mind. You have to utilize what you have here every single day. He also told me in order to lift up your Indian people, you can't lift up from here. You have to get down and get down in, go to the reservations. You have to go be involved with people so you understand how who cool you're trying to lift up. He also said at some point in your life, you're gonna have to find what is strength and stand up 
like a man or woman would in order that people may respect you for your real value. Otherwise, nobody will take you seriously. You can be one of those people that says you're going to do this, or I'm going to be this, or I'm going to change. But if you don't put actions, words into actions, nobody will follow you. The last thing he said, well, there's more, but it matters not how much you know. The question is, and he said, Jay, how do you use what you know? How are you going to use, what influence are you going to use to better our people? And I took that to heart. He said, Jay, be proud to be Native American. Walk your own path. It's okay to leave the reservation, but also make sure that you return to the reservation with new hope for the younger generation. Learn, keep your native customs. Language is important. Never, ever lose or forget of who you are. I have four rules I live by. I learned from Coach Nee while I was here at the University of Nebraska. Rule number one, I'm going to walk around a little bit, is listen. Listen. Scott. They don't want to take on you. Listen. You don't know it all. You don't know it all. You have to listen. You have to listen to your teachers. You have to listen to your counselors. You think you know, but you don't. You have to listen. Rule number two, do your best. Danny, do your best. She just told me this morning she's not doing very well in math, so we gotta get a tutor. Because if she spent as much time as she did on Facebook as we did in the classroom, we'd probably be getting all A's and B's. Rule number three, this might be a tough one. Treat people the way you wanna be treated. Treat people the way you wanna be treated. Something my mother, sitting up here in the front row, really installed at us at a young age. Because I can tell you, up until I was about seventh grade, I did not know I was African American, I was native, I was always J. I was always J. I was never looked at by color or race. She instilled in me and my sisters to treat people good, treat people the way you want to be treated. And in return, they'll treat you, hopefully, as good back. And lastly, this is a tough one. I, I spoke to the Omaha kids uh, last night. Do what's right. When I took this project on, the first thing a lot of people said was, kids are going to act up. They're going to get in the hotels. They're going to do this. There might be drinking. There might be drugs. There might be other stuff going on. As a coach, that was easy for me to say, eh. We'll go outside and we'll do suicides. We'll go run. <laughs> do what's right. You know what's wrong. I don't live on a reservation. I do go up there and run basketball camps. I see 